Let's go. Uh, that's a big win. It's it's a lot of fun. We're going to talk about the game today, some of the stuff we liked, some of the stuff we still didn't like, but a fun win. Jawan Howard, I, I had to keep it on the game until I saw that that handshake line. Just, they just make sure nothing would happen, but big win for the Badgers. Let's go. Let's talk about it on Wisconsin. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. As always, thank you for tuning into the show, your team every single day, sometimes more than that. And as you notice, I'm back in the home base. Feels great. Um, My setup's better, and the Badgers got a win on top of it. Very exciting stuff. Today's show brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. All right, let's let's start here. Let's get some comments. Adam, I, I see you, man. Let's go. I agree. Cannon, um, welcome to the show, man. Hepburn came up big when we needed it the most. Massive defensive play, right? Massive defensive play. Let's go. Thank you for the show. Uh, jumping on the show. Sorry, Adam. Feels so good to beat Michigan. Yeah, let's start there. I'm going to pause there. Um, I really wanted this win, everybody. I wanted this win so much because of Jawan Howard and that, that caveman nonsense he pulled last year and his fake accountability for it. I mean, we weren't doing the Locked On show at that point in time. We were doing – I was on a different pod. Boy, if we if we were doing this show, man, we would have had a lot of things to say about that. I, that whole thing was a Juwan Howard bro moment that went way beyond. And I wanted this game so much for him, for Hunter Hunter Dickinson's comments, for the fact that we're at home because it's Michigan. We really need this game for so many reasons. I really wanted this game. And everything I said on, on the big show I did with, with Greg Gard the other day, you know, none of that changes. This This doesn't dramatically, just like I said. We're going to win a couple more games. We're going to lose a couple more games, right? I'm not going to go back and redo the narrative on Craig Guard every single time. I think we know who we are this year. I think we know where the warts are. Those warts are still there, by the way. Like the, a, a close win doesn't negate those warts. We didn't get a field goal for like 10 minutes. <laughs> like, and one. That, 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 the brain doesn't even compute that. That you shouldn't even be able to do that. So the warts are still there. Like the answers didn't come tonight fully. Um, it's still okay to enjoy a win. It's still, I I said it in a different show. There's no draft lottery for college basketball. Let's win every game we can, and we'll figure out the issues in the off season. And if we can beat Michigan along the way, even better, right? Uh, That's a big win. That's a lot of fun. And listen, it's, it's not like, I don't think it's, I still don't think it's going to happen. Right. Again, I'm not letting one game completely sway me here, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. We can still get to March. Right, that that's not like crazy talk here. Uh, the Michigan game is a big win, and then you still have an opportunity to to pick up some momentum. You're on a home stand here. Maybe you get lucky in a couple games where the the balls bounce a different way. But let's get some more comments in here. Um, I just wanted to pause on this one from Adam. Thanks for jumping on the show, Adam. Feels good to beat Michigan. Yes, it does. It felt great. I really wanted this one. Um, Adam Otto says, with a big win like this, isn't missing the Sweet 16 under ah, Let's. Let's 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 slow the horses there, Adam. I think you're uh, being a little tongue in cheek there, anyway. But let's slow the horses. Let's just enjoy the win for what it is. Um, and again, I don't think we need to, or I'm not going to. Listen, I never want to tell somebody how to fan or what to think. If if you want to go back and and relitigate Greg Guard after every win and loss, do it. I have no issues with that. I'm not going to. Um, Nicholas Frey Miller says drinking in celebration tonight. I just have some agua. I've been traveling all day. Uh, maybe we'll have a little, a little something else after the show. We'll see. Um, let's keep talking here. Max Barron says, and Max, thank you for jumping on the show. I don't want to take too much away from the positives because it was a great win, but you can't go 11 minutes with a field goal. Yeah, that's because this team is still incredibly flawed. And this is something Rajiv and I talked about. In every win and every loss, there's good and bad, right? Like it's super easy when you lose a bunch of games to get caught up in the negative groundswell. And it's incredibly fun if you win a couple of games to get caught up in the positivity thunderstorms. But there, there's there's good and bad in every game. There's still a lot of issues on this team. Beating Michigan does not solve those issues, right? It If you watch Carter Gilmore in offense, it is a – no wonder we struggle to score at times. And all credit for the hustle plays he makes, for the defensive plays he makes. He was battling his butt off on Dickinson defensively today. But 
we'll, we'll run a pick and roll and replace with Carter Gilmore on the top of the key, kick it back to him. He'll be wide open and he can't shoot it. And the defense knows it at times we're playing five on four um, when we're on offense and it was really hard to score against good teams when one of your players literally can't shoot and the defense knows it. So yeah, Max, uh, all the issues are there again. You're we're always going to have a scoring slump. That's, that's who this team is. They don't have enough consistent scores. So um a hundred percent agree. Like let's, let's bask in the positive of it, but yeah, there's still, the warts are still here. The team is still who they are. Tyler Streber, no field goals made from 10 45 left in the second half. Pathetic, especially when you shoot 65% on the season from the free throw line. Yeah. It's really bad offense. I mean, you're, you're not wrong, man. Uh, but this is who we are. And when we had the big lead, we had built it up to 12, whatever it was. And I, I you just know it's going to collapse. Like, you know, it is. There's, I don't understand. There's still people who get surprised when the lead collapses. Of course, it's going to collapse. That's who we are. And it is, is built into our DNA, Badger fans. We are going to lose every big lead we built. But give credit to this team for persevering through that, um, making a couple big time defensive plays. Uh, you know, so yeah, of course the lead collapsed. And not making a field goal for almost 11 minutes is really bad. But it's also kind of who we are, and we know that, and that's just who we are this year. So um, a couple of things I, I want to hit on, and i got a bunch more comments I want to talk about too. Um, a couple of things I want to hit on. I have a couple notes here. One of the things, again, if we're going to talk about this team and where we're at and metrics we can look at, right? How, how can we, if we're not going to do any more kind of big picture guard stuff, unless something dramatic happens the rest of the year, right? What are some things we can look at? One of the things you can look at is, it, does the team bust its butt, right? And I was, I'd say another word, but I don't actually know what I can say on this show. It's a clean show. So, uh, but does the team bust its butt? Does it work hard? Is Gray Guard losing the effort? And I can tell you, right, it, they didn't in this game. Like, they outworked Michigan. They were crushing it on the offensive glass. I thought their defense was really good. Kamari McGee had some great moments defensively, even though he's a little outsized, catching up, cutting off uh, drivers, uh, forcing tough shots. Defensively, Michigan was forced into a lot of floaters, a lot of contested post-ups. Um, the defense was really good. The rebounding, especially offensively, kept them in this game. Those are hustle things. You know, Gray Guard did not lose the energy or the hustle of this team. And that's that's a good sign, right? Because this this season has not gone how the, the people in that locker room wanted to, right? Clearly. It's sometimes those teams collapse when it doesn't go right. You know, that's called being a front runner. And that's not what this team showed tonight. They came out and they absolutely battled in a game they had to win. So to me, that that's a good sign, something I wanted to bring up. Another one is um, Kamari McGee. I thought he had some great minutes. You know, he he missed the three really bad in the middle of that kind of that drought in the second half. It like clanged off the backboard. I don't think it hit the rim. But his first jumper, that mid-range jumper, was a great shot, tough shot. I thought defensively he showed a lot. He showed some quickness. Uh, I would like more minutes there. You know, he was able to get in the paint a, another time, took a shot that was called off because of a foul. But I think I think he can play more. And I think he showed some of that today. I wish Greg Gard would give him more consistent minutes. It frustrates me. And I've talked about it on the show. It's frustrated me all year. He hasn't done that, both with Kamari and with Hodges. Like, Kamari brings an element of quickness. And there are some decision makings. He's an inconsistent shooter. But when you look at the bench... There's not much else there. I think you can give Kamari five, six, seven, eight minutes a game. And if he's able to hit that mid-range, like that, that was a that was a really nice shot. I thought he gave Wisconsin kind of a shot in the arm today. Also showed a little bit of his quickness, being able to break some down off the dribble, get in the paint, kick it back out. I actually was hoping he would um when he had Dickinson isolated on him, I thought he was gonna be able to get to a mid-range there and, and shoot it. I think he's still working through some confidence issues. So, but I'm really impressed with McGee today. I hope he gets more minutes. Uh, let's take a couple more quick comments here, and then we'll take a, a quick break and get into more comments and a few more thoughts I had. Plus, let's talk about some of the Badgers football players posting their their miles per hour on Twitter. Not the the players themselves, but the, the program. Um, some interesting things there I want to talk about as well. Let's go to uh, Kendrick Stumbris. And I again, apologize if I mispronounce names. Badgers won tonight with a level of effort and hustle on the glass. 50-50 balls. It's been missing all season. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I didn't even see your comment was up next. But, yeah, that's the same thing I just said, Kendrick. Uh, Kendrick, thank you for jumping on the show. They outworked Michigan. 100% outworked them. And why they haven't been able to do that as much every game consistently this year, that's a great question. But they did tonight. And 
be excited about that because it's it's a good feeling, right? It's it's much better to be on the side of outworking than on the side of being outworked. So I'm excited about that one. Um, really, too, we're gonna take a quick break and then friends of the show, a bunch more comments of yours. I want to get to a couple more takes on the basketball side. I want to get to. We're gonna get into that next on Locked On Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Um, we're at the midway point of the basketball season, a little past that all-star breaks coming up. Now is the, the best time to get started with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If you don't win your first bet, free money back. If you don't win your first bet, download the FanDuel sports book app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Um, there's a reason we go to it. It is an industry standard and you can bet on anything from the money line point spreads, three pointers drained. I'm, you know I'm in on the Phoenix Suns winning the finals this year. I was already before they got Kevin Durant, but now maybe it's realistic. So that's where I'm at on the NBA one. Um, you can also bet on player props, points, rebounds. Everything is on FanDuel, the easiest way to do it, and many exclusive bets like how many three-pointers someone's going to drain. Um, same game parlays. Don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NBA. All right, let's keep talking basketball, y'all. Let's get some comments in here. Um, and again, thank you, everybody, for kind of sticking with me with my work travel. That setup wasn't great, and I acknowledge I can get to as much of the social media as I wanted to, so I appreciate y'all. Uh, Drew Andrus. Drew, thank you for jumping on the show. Kamari looked awesome. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Let's keep going here. Uh, Brian Fuchs, no coaches fighting. Now, listen. I, I didn't start the show until after the handshake line. I just wanted to see, just to be sure. And again, like it felt so good to beat Michigan in this game after that clown show that jo Juwan Howard pulled last year. That nonsense and then his kind of fake. Uh, uh, my advertising starting on. I had ESPN up and ESPN has these like automatic advertisements at play. Okay, let's keep going. That didn't throw me off too much. Ian S, why did McGee play more tonight? What kind of randomness is that? I think, you know, Ian, thank you for jumping on the show. I think Ian is, or our, McGee's kind of a confidence player. Like getting that first bucket to go in, I think probably gives him some of that confidence to keep playing a little better. I think guard just needs to let him play five to five to eight to maybe 10 minutes a game, you know, and just see what happens. Um, it's tough in conference play, but I think he gives you a bit of an edge. Garrett Kaiser, I feel like this is a big win for our confidence. Yeah, like they have to get some mojo rolling. And again, it's it's not like a crazy notion they can r rattle off a couple wins and get themselves right back into the picture to play into March. Again, let's not, nobody's going crazy. They're not going to make a deep run. It is what it is. The flaws are not going away, but it's still fun. It's still fun to, to play for March. It's still fun to get into the tournament. It's still fun to fill out your bracket and make believe that Wisconsin's going to go all the way, right? Like, I'm still going to do that if they get there. Uh, let's keep going here. Um Badger Ron says, if you don't shoot, hit the boards. Yeah, they they crossed. I mean, they they got so many second and, and even third chances at points off the offensive glass. Uh it it was a it was a it was why they won, quite frankly. It was one of the biggest reasons why they won. Um, Jim Sainsbury. Jim, thank you for jumping on the show. You're on a lot of them. That Michigan player with the big mouth. I bet wishes he didn't say it now. You're talking about Hunter Dickinson, of course, calling all Wisconsin. Uh, Badgers players, scumbags, you know, uh, and then continuing to just kind of needle that point in. I'll be honest. I like I, I like some back and forth banter. I think it makes games, especially regular season college basketball games, more exciting. It gets the crowd more fired up. And listen, quite frankly, that that was probably, uh, you know, the best thing Hunter Dickinson could have done. Right. To get that cold, that cold center crowd fired up because it's been a, a little quiet this year for good reason like nobody wants to cheer for a team that can't score for 17 minutes for gosh sake but he he gave a little bit of jolt of energy into that that arena which i think was probably the best thing or the thing that the badgers could have really used a lot of so i don't know it's like hats off to hunter for getting him fired up a little bit uh darren wyman huge win need to sweep this home stand to get back in the thick of things yeah yeah they, they got to keep it going uh, and they haven't been able to do that consistently this year. So I, again, I wouldn't count on it. You know, like we know who they are. Don't don't be fooled by it. But be excited for the win. Is is where I'm at. Let's keep going here. Um, Mason Sansala. This is the one game I circle on the schedule. Game one goes to the scumbags. Low. I don't know if I'm reading that right. Game one goes to the scum. Oh yeah, I'm reading it right. Gotcha. Yep. 
It took me a second to remember what Hunter Dickinson said. Mason, thank you for the comment. I agree. Brian D says um, McGee gave the team a spark for sure. He, you know, here's the thing. This is a team that that lacks an element of of quickness and shiftiness, and McGee has those things. Now he also has youth, inexperience, inconsistent shooting, a lack of size. That's why he's not a starter, right? That's why you went to UW Green Bay. But he does give you a spark if you I think you have to let him play a little bit because he gives you something that you don't have elsewhere on the roster, in my opinion. Um, let's keep going here. Cannon L says the way Jordan played without scoring uh, much really stuck out to me. You know, he Hep, you know, Jordan, Jordan Davis and Hepburn, I think both play pretty hard consistently. And I, I it sticks out to me. In, and I don't think they always get credit for that. Now, I know um, you're bringing up Jordan. I, I think the same thing with Chucky. Chucky didn't have a great scoring game today, but I think he plays hard at the big defensive moment. I think both of them play pretty hard consistently. Davis had a big three in the first half. You know, again, he just needs he needs to shoot consistently to find that spot on this, this team and then in, in rotation. Uh, Monty D says, I guess a win is a win. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's all we're going to get from this team this year. You're not going to win 20 point games with this team this year. A win is a win. Darren Wyman, Asijin is the best player on this team. Wall is lost. I don't think I still don't think Asijin is the best player on this team, Darren. I have to respectfully disagree there. I don't think he's the best player on this team. I the thing with cuz you got to remember Connors is essentially freed up to move without the ball to cut He's not the primary playmaker. He's not the primary ball handler. He still has defensive issues. He's not like he he's allowed to focus on the one thing he can do really well, which is shoot and score. And he can do that better than anyone on the team. And this team would not win. <laughs> this team is not winning those games without him. But you know, without Chucky Chucky Hepburn, who's handling the ball, without Tyler Wall, who's who's being that defensive guy, that rebounding guy. I just think other players have to carry a bigger amount of baggage, a, big, a bigger load than Connor right now. But Connor has the highest ceiling. I, I think to me, I don't think that's in question. I think as he continues to add more to his bag, we saw some of that today, that really strong right-handed drive to the rim. Um, he had a couple nice drives to the rim, getting the ball in clutch moments to hit those free throws to seal the game. Like Connor's game is on, on packing and unfolding as we, as we watch. Right. And in a couple of years, he's going to be an all conference player, if not more. So, I'm excited for it. I don't think he's the best player right now because I think his game is is kind of just set up for that one thing he does really well. Let's keep going here. Um, a couple more things I wanted to talk about quickly. Let me pull up my list. You know, one of the things that I thought was interesting um, in the game was there's there's points where I don't know. How, it's not that I, I blame him because I don't know. There's there's no depth, and we know that, right? I'm, I'm not going to rehash the depth thing. But there's points where, you know, Stephen Crow gets in foul trouble, and he he did it in the Nebraska game too. I, I almost think if you're great guard, you got to roll with him. Now, it worked out today. I, I think at times you can almost foul your own player out by not letting him try to play through foul trouble. You almost at times just have to roll with him because there you are in the clutch moments of a game with a couple minutes left trying to guard Hunter Dickinson with Carter Gilmore. And I just think you got to look at your your – one of your best players, um, an upperclassman, and say you have to go out there and and move your feet, move your feet, arms up, show the show the refs, don't pick up a cheap foul. I need to trust you in this moment because I can't have, I can't, and it's not even Carter Gilmore's fault. He can't guard Hunter Dickinson in the clutch, right? And he saw him pick up a big foul there. So I, I, it's one thing with guard that still bothers me a little bit. I think he needs to trust his players to play through foul trouble a little bit more with no depth on the bench, but. That that I had that written down. That was one of my notes. Uh, maybe you all disagree with that one. No worries if you do. Um, a couple, one more thing that I oh here's one. I want to bring this up because I want to be fair. We talk a lot about get Connor Siege and more shots, right? We talk a lot about you need to run more offense for him, right? In the middle of that second half drought, there's about six minutes, fifty five seconds left. Timeout. Greg Gard drew up a beautiful play for Connor, right? Coming across the baseline, off a screen, swung the ball, wide open shot in the corner. They were up 55 to 49 and Connor just missed it. But it you got to you got to give credit where credit's due. Great guard, great play in that moment that would have really helped stop that run that Michigan was on and you know also getting the ball to Connor at the end of the game, the seal of the game. We talked about it in our previous shows how Connor has to have the ball in those moments. He's the best free throw shooter. 
So hats off to guard on those. Um, we got to be fair here when when if we're being critical of Connor not getting enough shots, we got to call it out when when guard is calling up those plays and those actions to get him those looks. Make or miss, that's a great look. So I was excited to see that happen as well. Mason Zinsala says, more importantly, we made our free throws much better there. And surprise, surprise, close game. You make your free throws, you win, right? Much better there. Uh, let's see. Big Cheese. I don't think I've seen you on the show before, man. Welcome. Uh, Seijin is the man. Dickinson needs to get an attitude adjustment. I don't know. Like, I love beating him because he's kind of a villain. But I almost kind of – I like – I just like that element of fun to me. So it doesn't really bother me as much. It, it does make me want to beat Michigan more, but it wouldn't kill me if Wisconsin that not, I don't want Wisconsin guys going on a podcast. Don't get me wrong and calling the other teams scumbags, but a little more swagger would be kind of nice on Wisconsin too. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm off base on that. I don't know. Let's keep going here. Let's get some more comments. Let's see. Um, a couple more comments about a siege. And again, there's a lot of comments in here that are kind of similar to a siege and being the man, a siege and being great. Nicholas Fry Miller said the crowd see more into it tonight. I agree. Again, I think that was partially Hunter Dickinson. Like he did was he did us a favor. Everybody's I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people are upset about it, or you shouldn't say that. He fired that crowd up, and that crowd needed to be fired up. So he did us a favor. Um, I really like that. Beach Bum said that the team seemed to run more relaxed with McGee at the point. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. You could be right. Uh, I do think that there's times, and I said this before the season, and I haven't really re revisited it. I do think there's times where I would like to see Chucky play off ball. Uh, someone brought this up in a previous show too. Chucky to play off ball and let him get some open shots, let Kamari or somebody else handle the ball a little bit. I think that might be a nice way to get um chucky some more open threes where he's really good he's a really good spot up three-point shooter and that might be a way to to get him involved a little bit more there um don't badger me thank you again for jumping on the show don't badger me you've been on a lot of them excellent offensive rebound scrappiness won us the game charlie hustle yeah like that's how this team's gonna have to win this year they're going to have to create extra shots they're gonna have to fly around defensively take two or three of those charges we saw them take you know they're going to have to do those things and not shoot 50 percent from the free throw line as well they do those things. They're they're going to win some games. <laughs> How's that for a high bar? They're going to win some games. They're still going to lose some games because that's who this team is. Um, P says those blocks those blocks on Corral can't happen. You know, there's that late late one where Hunter Dickinson got him. Hunter Dickinson also fouled the crap out of him right before he went up for the shot. Yeah, I agree. Like Corral's a little limited athletically too. I think he struggles. I, he's just going to struggle with some of the bigger, better bigs because he does have some limbs. Now, he had a couple of really nice moves as well. That kind of fake shoulder coming back over the right, I thought was a really nice move. Um, I like that he's the, – the only thing with Kraus, I think Kraus sometimes makes up his mind that he's going to to post up and try to score instead of letting the game come to him. I think there's still a feel thing there a little bit, right, where when he puts his head down and decides to score, a lot of times those end up being four shots and – not a great look at times. All right, we're going to take a very quick break for our friends of the show. Come back, get to more of your comments. I, I want to bring up some football speed stuff too, but maybe we won't get to it today because we're celebrating a win over Jawan Howard. Let's go. All right, coming back to this, appreciate everybody tuning into the show. Um, really, really do appreciate all everybody. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with us, for helping build this show, for jumping on the comments. Uh, you guys are awesome. Appreciate y'all, and let's keep it going. Let's see here. Um, don't badger me, says our effectiveness at the rim is very puzzling. See, this is one where I actually don't think it is. And I'm not not to disagree with you or, or, or say you're wrong. I look at this team and I don't see any plus athletes. Plus athletes finish better at the rim, right? Because they can elevate. And I don't see any really long, rangy wings. Those guys finish better at the rim. You think Sam Deckers because they, they can really get over the shot blockers. They can have a cleaner look. And I don't see anybody who breaks the defense down consistently and generates dump-off looks or, or lob dunks, right? I see guys like Chucky, uh, Connor. I see guys like Kamari, Crowell, Gilmore, Wall. Those are all players who, from an athletic standpoint, are going to struggle a little bit at the rim because they're going up against rim protectors that are – a higher caliber of athlete that are longer that can jump higher. You know, those, those shots at the rim are tough at, at now. I say that knowing Tyler wall also blew a wide open layup. I, I, I acknowledge that point, but a lot of those other shots contested shots on the rim aren't easy shots at the rim. If, if maybe I'm not making the most sense trying to get my thoughts out there on that, but it doesn't actually puzzle me that much. I just don't, don't think we have the athletes that finish at the rim. Well, um, Luke Verhollen. 
Hopefully I got that right. If Wall can get back to 100% soon, it will help a ton. Hopefully we won't miss wide open layups. Yeah, that was a brutal miss in the second half from, from Wall. I still think he's he's hobbled a little bit. I don't know. I just don't think he can be 100% playing the way he is. I just don't. Um, maybe I'm wrong on that. I know people say he wasn't as good early in the year. I disagree a little bit with that. I, he almost carried us to the Kansas game. He, he was the best player on that that court probably. So I don't know. I think he's still a little dinged up, and I think he's probably in his head a little bit. Uh, he's still a really good defensive player. He still helps you on the glass. Uh, pretty good passer to a little turnover pro. And so he, my point is he does other things on the floor that that do help you. So, yeah, Tyler Schreiber wall is a head case now. Uh, guy needs a darkness retreat <laughs> to clear his mind. He's not going to get one of those. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of the season. Not going to get one of those. Uh, Jan Volk, we aren't very good, but damn it, that felt good. Yes, yes, that's exactly where I'm at. Like, I can kind of compart- compartmentalize the season, right? I can put it in a box, put it to the side, and I'm just going to enjoy the rest of it for what it is. I really am. And then in the off season, we have to have real talk. And I, I talked about that in the last show too. Like, I'm done with the... And again, if anybody else wants to talk about it, I'm 100% cool with that. I'm not ever going to tell somebody what to talk about or how to think, but I'm done with the the gray guard, hot seat, fire him, fire, don't fire him stuff for a while. I'm just going to enjoy the season for what it is. I'm going to cheer like heck for every game and... Every Big Ten foe we can put put it you know put down. I'm going to be excited for it, especially when it's Michigan. So, I agree, Jan. That's exactly where I'm at. Uh, Brady Pepper says the dry spells are cringeworthy. How can the last two games, especially um, going from rolling offensively to falling flat, right? I mean, I I don't want to belabor the point, but and thank you for jumping on the show. But that's who we are. You know, I keep saying that, but for people to expect a team that lacks consistent scores and hasn't been able to consistently play 40 minutes of offense the entire year to start doing it now, it's just not going to happen. And I know it seems odd that we can have it rolling and the ball's ping-ponging around, we're hitting some shots, but even in those moments, th- those players can't can't play the entire game, right? You know what I mean? Like there's there has to be bench players coming in. The bench isn't very good. That's going to disrupt rhythm. And quite frankly, some of the shots we take, I talked about, the struggles at the rim, some of those shots we're taking are just going to stop going down. So I I hear you. It's, it's weird, but that's just who we are. And it would be more surprising if we kept the foot on the gas pedal at this point and didn't have a drought, right? I, you just have to go into every game, assuming there's going to be at least like a five or six minute drought. And you have to hope it doesn't extend to like 12 minutes. Like that's, that's where we're at. So um, yeah, Darren Wyman, Chucky makes up for a bad offensive game, best defensive play of the game at the end. Agreed. What a pick. Yeah, he's awesome. What a pick. Uh, Ryan Arnold agreeing with Jan Volk. Yes, and I also agreed with Jan on her comment. Um, a bunch of comments here. We'll try to get to all of them. Thomas Miller. Uh, Thomas, thanks for jumping in. You're on a lot of shows. Yes, but 11 minutes without a field goal. Come on. Listen, I agree with you. It's terrible. I'm not – I, I want to be clear. I'm not trying to justify it. And, uh, Thomas, I'm not trying to attack your point at all. Like, I agree with you 100%. But, again, that's who we are. And – it shouldn't be 11 minutes. It should, you shouldn't have a five minute drought, but that's, that's again, that's who this team is. And keep in mind that 11 minutes wasn't scoreless. I'm no, I'm not trying to like, you know, talk it away, but we hit free throws in that stretch and we won the game. Um, it's, it's going to be ugly offensively. That's not going to change us here. And I don't know what to tell people like, should it be that ugly? No. Does it have to get fixed this off season? Yes. Is it going to get fixed this year? No. Um, <laughs> Let's Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey D. I don't know how to pronounce that last name without getting weird with that. Um, let's talk about football speed. I think it's Jeffrey Dementor. Uh, let's talk about football speed. Sure. Uh, really quick, because I do want to talk about this. A lot of basketball talks on this, obviously, because it was a great game. But Wisconsin football did, and I got the the comment up here for everyone watching on YouTube. Let me throw it up here. They put out uh, miles per hour for some players. You can see it scrolling around on the bottom. Jace Arnold was uh, tw- almost 20 mi- 21 miles an hour. Kate Yakimelli was 20. Uh, Quincy Burroughs, Will Pauling were both above 20 miles an hour. Travion Blaylock was at 20 miles an hour. So a couple things really, really quick with this one that impressed me. The first one is Jace Arnold. We talked off season uh, with John Garcia Jr. And we talked about Jace Arnold and his game. And John Garcia Jr. said, this is the f- this Jace Arnold kid is going to be faster than any Ohio State receiver recruit they get this year. And if you know the caliber of weapons Ohio State recruits, that tells you how fast Jace Arnold is. And you see this speed now put out there almost 21 miles an hour as a freshman 
He's going to get faster. He's a burner, absolute burner. And then you start to look at some of the, the receivers, Quincy Burroughs, right? The Cincinnati transfer. We talked to, to Brady Collins, the strength and conditioning uh, new director at Wisconsin. He's, uh, Brady Collins said he's all of 6'2", 200 pounds. He's a 4'4 guy. He could be a stud with that size and speed ratio. And then KD Akimeli, a guy that I've talked about for a long time, a guy who I thought was a sleeper in last year's class, a guy who I thought should have always been on the offensive side, right? And this goes way back. This isn't new. I thought he should have been a, a running back from the jump. He's running 20 plus miles an hour. He's an explosive athlete. He's not slight. He's running that fast with a good build. He's explosive vertical ability, a 40 inch vertical, I believe. I might be, listen, there might be a reason they didn't take a transfer running back this year. That's all I'll say. Might be a reason. Now, I don't know the context behind all these, these speed times that they posted. Like this might be the only group that ran. I'm not saying that these are the fastest players on the team because I don't know the context behind the testing, but two things. Some of these guys are really fast. Travion Blaylock coming back from injury, running uh, past 20 miles an hour, which is awesome. And the other thing is this social media game that this football program has going on right now is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. More of it, please. Right? Like posting mile per hours of football players. Yes. More, please. Absolutely. So um, that's probably all we'll do with that one. Uh, Brian Lash also points out Braylon Allen at 19.7 miles per hour. Yeah. He's, he, he's fast. He just has to get up to speed. Um, Brian Fuchs says speed kills in football. Let's see. Uh, Mark D. Have you seen Wisconsin football Twitter? These videos give me new life. Yes. Wisconsin's listen. The football social media game is absolutely on point. They have been crushing it. So I'm super excited, especially this is the, like the off season content. Wait until like spring practice hits. This is going to be a really fun team to follow from a social media standpoint. We've been, I'll say that for ever. <laughs> Like for a long time, maybe, yeah, for a long time. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for everybody tuning in. I'm happy to get back to the, the home base. A bunch of comments I didn't get to, uh, but I do appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, Chris Hart says, why can't we get Hodges some minutes? I agree. I <laughs> I agree. I wish, I wish they would have worked him in. Maybe it's just... Um, Maybe it's just a little too late in the year for in great guards opinion. I don't know. I think he could help you. Hopefully he's able to help you next year. All right, let's, let's keep rolling with this. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. I uh, really do appreciate everybody coming out to the show. Appreciate everybody putting up with my work travel, not getting back to y'all as much as I want to um, on Wisconsin. We got John Garcia jr. Coming up this week. Um, a couple other guests I want to talk about and talk to. So that's coming up this week. Appreciate everybody on Wisconsin big win today. And we'll talk later.